Hi, I'm Lewis Nemec from Sonail Test, and I'm sitting here with some micro-ohmeters. And what do we use micro-ohmeters for? We use them to measure very low resistance. And it's important for electrical connections, um, especially on load-carrying conductors, on your lines, uh, through your breakers. It's important that, that these connections have a low resistance because the heat that is going to dissipate uh, through an electrical circuit is proportional to the resistance squared. It's, it's, you take the IR squared, mu current multiplied times the resistance, times the resistance again. So if I double the resistance, I'm going to get four times more heat. So as you can imagine, if I have a connection with uh, not a low resistance and I start pushing a lot of current through it, the temperature is going to rise very fast. So one of the most important measurements in the electrical trade is a low resistance measurement or just verifying that we have a, a highly conductive pathway for which to current to flow because if, if you start to get a big load, you know, as, as loading increases, the current increases. And uh, therefore the temperature will increase. And so when you hear about electrical equipment overheating uh, or being overloaded or the overload causing overheating, it's because of this phenomenon of uh, the heat dissipated being proportional to the current multiplied times the resistance squared and the current increasing um, as, as the load increases. Because if, if you need to measure uh, how much energy is being used in a power system, it's the current multiplied times the voltage. Well, the voltages should be constant on most power systems. And so the current's going to have to rise in order to put through more energy through that circuit. So for many smaller connections, uh, you know, milliohms, uh, 1,000 microohms, 500 milliohms. This level of resistance is is suitable, but if you were talking about a connection that's going to be handling hundreds of amps, or even thousands of amps in some cases, um, you're going to need to have a resistance level in in the microohms. Like for example, through a circuit breaker, you want to have like 50 microohms, or 100 microohms, and they even get down to like 6 microohms for some of the very high quality, uh, high current circuit breakers. Now, a, uh, and, and I'm talking about small numbers of microohms, you know, through a section of a circuit that's only maybe a few inches long. Now, obviously, as you extend the wires out longer, let's say I want to measure the resistance of this wire. Well, if this wire is 10 feet long, maybe I have some couple hundred milliohms, but if it's very short, it should be microohms. So these resistance values are really proportional to the length of the wire and proportional to the uh, cross-sectional area of the wire or of the, the conductor that you're using. So fundamentally, to measure resistance, you have to know the current and you have to know the voltage. And a micro-ohmeter has a current that is output from the instrument, and you will select how much current you want to push through, and then you're going to measure the voltage. So you see on these leads here, each lead has two channels, the red for pushing the current and the blue for measuring the voltage. So wherever you put the probes, there is going to measure the resistance between the two points, because the blue channel is measuring the voltage drop. So we measure the voltage drop, the instrument is telling us how much current it's put out. So there we have the current and we have the voltage. Calculate the resistance. Resistance would equal the voltage divided by the current. So if a given amount of current, if I have a lower voltage drop, I would have a lower resistance. So uh, it's, it's, it's a very uh, elementary and fairly simple and really the most important concept in electrical power is that 
the conductors have adequately low resistance so that they can carry a lot of current without getting hot. And depending on which type of device you're testing, um, you can choose the micro-ohmmeter that's going to give you the, the measurement results uh, in the range where you need. Because some smaller connections that are only carrying a few amps uh, may only need to have 500 micro -ohm, or 500 milliohms or you know uh, a thousand micro ohms 500 micro ohms but when you get into higher capacity a higher uh, current rated devices a 800 amp breaker 400 amp breaker 2000 amp breaker you need to have a micro ohm level resistance you're talking about you know 10 20 30 50 100 micro ohms so a micro ohmmeter is a device which pushes current and measures voltage. So the old one we have here, <laughs> the MMR620, it's going to give us 10 amps, actually as low as 0 0.1 uh, milliamps, all the way up to 10 amps test current. So you select your test current, 10 amps, and then it's measuring the voltage. So you see our current channels pushing current through the device, and then we're measuring the voltage. So you just plug these in and make the measurement. The old one here, the MMR620, is going to give us one micro ohm of resolution, which is quite good for a fairly inexpensive micro ohmmeter. When we get up to the MMR650, the, the newer version, it's a much more precise voltage measurement, um, and thus the increased cost, but that allows us to measure to 0.1 micro ohm. So this is going to have 10 times the resolution. Uh, so this is 0.1 micro ohm, so that's one ten millionth of an ohm. But again, the test current is limited to 10 amps. So if I'm going to go test a breaker that's going to have 2,000 amps running through it or 800 amps running through it, uh, a lot of times the specification for how to test it is going to say, well, you need to test it with 200 amps current or test it with 100 amps current. So then we have to move to these big micro-ohmmeters, MMR6500, MMR6700, which can output 200 amps. So if we're gonna have to push 200 amps through our test device, we have to use these big cables. So the big MMRs come with the big high current cables and the small MMRs use the low current cables. Of course, uh, even on the big one here, I have the option of using the small current cables, but it's, it's going to be limited to 10 amps. If I'm using a test current higher than 10 amps, I got to plug in the big ones. And you got the heavy clamps to make a solid connection, you push a lot of amps through your test object, and then connect only the blue channels here to measure the voltage drop. So, um, MMR 6500 and 6700 and 100 amp, 200 amp output. Um, these instruments use like the heavy duty power supply, but they also have the battery. And, and of course, these are also battery operated as well. But we're going to go out in the field and make some measurements on uh, some transformer connections and some other uh, pieces of electrical equipment just to show you how to hook it up. It's, it's very simple though, um, but something important to note is that your current leads need to be uh, on the outside of your voltage measurement leads. And so it's laid out here pretty simply, you can see. So you want to make sure the voltage probes are inside of the current probes, or like they're set up on here, they're, they're right together in the same place. But the, the, the resistance that you're going to measure is going to be from the, the point to point of where you put the voltage probes. Now, these instruments I'll mention right now, also uh, the 650 and the 6500, 6700, they're also equipped with uh, temperature probes to measure the temperature due to temperature compensation. Um, they have a demagnetization function, so if you're measuring a coil or a winding, something with a core, uh, you build up a DC field inside, and this is going to be able to discharge that and demagnetize the core. Uh, and these instruments also have circuitry to handle 
uh, an inductive object like a winding or a, or a uh, coil. So uh, they're not completely outfitted for winding resistance, but they are capable of doing winding resistance, although um, the compliance voltage on these is you know, uh, 7.2, 6 volts. So we don't have a uh, the ability to very quickly uh, saturate uh, a winding, but uh, we can still eventually get the accurate measurement uh, using these. Okay, we're going to look now at some of the features of these MMR instruments. So on the main menu here, we have the option of are we going to do a resistive object measurement or an inductive object measurement? Or if we don't know, we can do the auto selection measurement. Um, and then also here we have the current logger. So if we select the logger, it's going to plot us out a, a graph of uh, how the resistance has changed throughout the time that we're testing. Now, okay, let's say we're going to do a resistive object. Push the button, drop down this menu, select the test current. Um, generally, a good idea to use more current if possible, or up to what is close to where the device is rated. So like if I have a breaker rated for 200 amps, and I can get 200 amps out of this test set, push 200 amps through it, or whatever the specification is. So anyway, you select your test current. This, this device here, this is our MMR6500, it'll do 100 amps. MMR6700 will do 200 amps. Okay. However, if we're in the mode where we're doing an inductive object, it's going to limit to 10 amps. Um, and an inductive object, you know, normally is tested by a winding resistance meter, but we have built the capability in to these MMRs. Um, although it still takes some time, we will uh, get an accurate measurement. Um, these have a connection to the PC, they have the temperature probe. If you have the temperature probe connected, of course it's going to tell you the temperature and it's going to make a temperature compensated uh, measurement. Um, so let's get back out of this PC connection, push the X. Of course, uh, MMR 6500, 6700, and the MMR 650, the 10 amp model here, they are all equipped with this very nice touch screen. Um, and of course, the USB connections, the Ethernet, these can also connect, I believe, with our Bluetooth app that you can have on your phone. So you can, you can add to the memory, you can store your measurements. Um, of course, these are all battery powered. Even here, this, uh, these high current uh, MMRs, still powered by the battery. Um, these have also been equipped with uh, what we call a core demagnetization. So if you're measuring a coil, a winding, a generator, a motor, uh, even a CT, um, when you push DC through this test object, you're going to build up a magnetic field, which is going to have to be demagnetized afterwards. Um, we'll get into more of some of those details later. But basically, if you're pushing DC through something for a while, the, the field inside is going to, uh, the field inside of a coil is going to continue to add and build up and uh, uh, polarize. It's called polarization. And the longer you push the DC through it, the more polarization you get, and the longer it's going to take it to, to depolarize on its own. So these instruments not only discharge the static, but they also can demagnetize uh, so that you don't have this uh, polarization effect. Because actually, if you, if you push DC through a winding for a long time, say five or 10 minutes, um, it's going to uh, take quite a while for it to discharge. And actually when you disconnect the leads, the, the depolarization of the core will build voltage back up onto the winding. So you'll have voltage just appearing back on the uh, test object. So, Whenever you're doing a DC test on a coil, if it's a uh, insulation resistance or if it's contact resistance, if you're if you're pushing DC through a coil, uh, you 
you need to de you need to discharge and demagnetize afterwards. Uh, something to be aware of. And these instruments will do this, um, but you just should pay attention to it. Um, I think that's about it for right now. Let's see, there's a few other features I might need to mention. Oh, the interference protection. So we have built in uh, up to 400 kV uh, static interference protection for these MMRs. And of course, MMR stands for uh, measurement of micro resistance. Um, there is a, uh, these can actually work with a barcode scanner that you can connect to the instrument and you can scan uh, the device you're testing. So if you have some systematic uh, testing routine, uh, you can incorporate the barcodes with the instrument to save your measurements. Um, logger function. And we've added a wind turbine test measurement uh, to the to the MMR650. And I'll give you some more details on that later. I actually don't know a lot about that at the moment. So we're going to go out in the field and make some measurements just to show you how to hook these up. But it's very simple. Um, stay tuned.